Also, what problem are you solving with your business? So, seller is solving the problem of creators not having a platform to receive money from their international customers as a freelancer. Or you need a platform to like sell your digital products. Okay? Seller is solving that product. Or you need a problem to like um so seller is solving that problem. Or you need a problem to like host your courses, seller is solving that problem. And also, just to piggyback on how seller started, our amazing CEO and founder of seller, Dr. Kendra Singh, was working at Paystack. And at Paystack, um, most like most of the people, so they were, so he was working in the customer um, engineering department, and people were usually asking, how can we receive or how can we, you know, sell ebooks, right? Requests. People were asking, and you know, Paystack was like, oh, we don't like offer that service right now. And then was asked, you know, um, his boss, oh, can we like create a product out of this? And he was like, yeah, sure, go ahead, please do your thing, mm. and that's it. So. What questions are people asking you? When I moved to Kigali, um, I got lots of like inquiries on like, oh Milton, how did you move? Oh Milton, how did you like relocate from like Nigeria to Kigali? What are the process steps? How can I get my visa? How can I you know, get like a permanent visa, a business visa? And I kept on getting questions and I was like, okay, you know what? Why don't I just create an ebook out of these things and answer everybody's questions while I'm making money out of it? Created an ebook um, and you know started like pushing the ebook, made like lots of sales from that. Um, and you know Raymond was my place the other day. Raymond was sort of like, oh my god, the only thing that's left for you is for you to get married and stuff. I'm like, dude, calm down. He was like, how are you avoiding life? I'm like, I have an ebook that is like sorting out all of these things, right? Even when I made my first two hundred dollars from the internet was when I was like sixteen years old. Same thing. People were asking me questions. Right, and I created an ebook after those questions people were asking me and started selling it to them. I said to myself, I will not talk about digital products here. And this is me going back to talking about digital products. Right. <laughs> right. People were asking me questions and I created an ebook out of this thing and you know started. So what questions are people asking you? One of the ways I can find your profitable niche or your profitable business is the questions people are asking you. If I really want to like take you know this moving to Kigali, I can build like a whole business out of it right now, not just people. Helping Nigerians to relocate here to like and it's profitable. And that might just be an idea for you guys actually. So what questions are people asking you, right? And also, I think I'll actually need someone here on standby, but that's okay. I'm Nigerian, you can always feel as well. Um and also, who remembers the story I, I spoke about seller when I started using the product and I was so surprised, like, oh my god, this works. And one amazing thing about the product is um, if you are in Rwanda and I'm in Nigeria and I send you my product link and my um, pricing is in Naira, let's say for instance 30,000 Naira, and I send you the link as a Rwanda, I want to pay for my products from Rwanda, you will see the conversion in your own currency. I don't need to do any other thing. When I learned that, I was like, oh my god, this is so amazing. That was my aha moment. So what are the aha moments your customers or users are having when they use your products? That's one thing people miss. They, people think that it's just about creating a product and start selling. You have to be very intentional about the aha moment. Like, oh my god, wow, this is amazing. About the Apple advert that says 1,000 songs in your pocket. Awesome. That was an aha moment for people. Who knows Piggy Vest here? People can actually start saving their money in like different currencies. That's an aha moment for people. Who knows some um, rice vest here? You can invest in foreign real estate. That's an aha moment for people. Who wants to give me an example of an aha moment in the product here? I mean, teachers, I love interacting with bamboo. Bamboo. Okay. Investing in exactly. So the question is in your business, in your product, what is the aha moment? What's the aha, what aha moment are you giving to people? So for my company, bro, um, one issue most startup founders have, because we usually serve startups, um, and you know, um, patients from my team asked me, she said, 
Um, are we serving startups that have raised funds or that have raised funds? We are saying that have raised funds. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, um, one issue most startup founders usually have is actually finding marketing talent. If you work in the startup space or in the business space, finding great marketers is very difficult. Trust me, it's very difficult because there are people out there that will take your products to the moon. And when it's time for them to leave X, they got to know find their way to Bagada. So we started, so we created the products and you know started you know getting people into our talent school, right? Around like over five people in our talent school. And um, usually it takes time for us, like we did the estimate, like let's say one to like two months, like find marketing talents that are good. So like, okay, you know what? We already have a talent pool. We solved the chicken and egg problem. We'll give you a talent in two weeks. 14 days, you're looking for a talent to go to our talent pool, get some of our talent pool, vet the person, send the person to you. And most, most of you are like, oh my god, this is amazing. And every single day we've been getting inquiries from people from Money Africa, from Carrots, from Paystar, oh, we need like we need marketers. Um, I have a meeting with the founder tomorrow. He said that he needs like up to like 10 people in his marketing team and he's coming to like Aaron Block. Because of that, I have it. Wow, this is what the problem that my product solved. And also, having an aha moment in your products, it's nothing too deep. Sometimes it can just be, just solve the problem. Just solve the problem, that can be an aha moment. Or just be great at customer service, that can be an aha moment. Or just have a product that is easy to use, with great interface, that, that can be an aha moment. And if you work in a product space, let's say startup product space or tech product space, most people they actually most people actually focus more on the problem that they are solving, but not on the experience that customers are having. So much write that down. Most people focus on the products that they are solving and not on the experience that their customers are having. The experience of customers that users are having is as important as the problem that you're solving. So focus on giving people a great experience. And let me just give you guys like a marketing tip, okay? Let me give you guys a marketing tip before um, we move on. So um, if you actually want to, if you actually want to grow your product easily, you have to make sure that the time frame for a user to get their aha moment or to get value from the product is very short. So let's say you're working on a tech product, right? And you count from the moment a user finds a product on the internet down to the moment they get value from the product. What are the steps? If it's up to 10, it will be very difficult for a product to grow. Reduce it to at most five. If you can, three. Don't make it complicated for users. And the faster you do that, the faster you're going to grow as a product. And it's and also when I was studying computer science, um, there's something called Gums model. In Gums model, the how you're smiling. You know about Gums model, yeah? yeah? Thank you. So in Gums model, it's also something that has to do with you know also you are UX that um, if a user like the shorter a user navigates um, your interface the more your user understands the interface. So the shorter it takes a user to like sign up on your product and get value from your products, the faster you're going to grow. So that's a tip for you guys. And you can also apply this even if you're doing e-commerce, even if you're doing agriculture, how quick can, you, can your customer get value from what you're doing? Okay? Are we having a great time here? If you're having a great time, say aye. Aye. If you're having a great time, say aye. Aye. Awesome. Um, so, and, I mean, this is just something for you to think about. Marketing starts from having a great product that is worth talking about. People will only talk about your products if it gives them. You remember when I spoke about seller, how I discovered seller, or oh, I had an aha moment, so it made me to talk about the products. Sometimes people are wondering, oh, why is no one talking about my product? Why is no, why, why is no, why, why are people not patronizing me? Is your product worth talking about? Right now, you know, most, <laughs> You know, it's very funny that most of us in the personal development space, business, marketing, we always complain whenever Big Brother starts. We're like, oh my God, like Nigerian youth are not focused. Yeah. This and this, you can't read really, oh, This and this, yeah, 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 yeah. But Big Brother is a show that is worth talking about. 
People who only talk about things that are capturing their attention. Why are you capturing people's attention? When we did Seller Creator Summit, um, it was very huge. Actually, ask anyone. It was very huge. Um, over 20 people signed up. 23 countries. We trained on Twitter. Like, we literally trained on Twitter. Because people, like, it was something worth talking about. In marketing, in business, it, attention is the most important currency. If you can, this is the strategy, this is the funnel. You capture attention, okay? You convert attention, okay? You retain attention, then you repeat again. Capture, convert, and retain. Awesome. So, the question is Is your product worth talking about? Is that your WhatsApp? Is your product worth talking about? You can have this one. Okay. Okay, thank you. So, what do you do? Okay, I work with uh, the Global Non Profit Organization. I work with the Global, global Non Profit Organization. Okay, cool. That provides support to change the arts in terms of giving them seed funding or grant support. Interesting. So I work as a project manager for this. Okay, how are you guys capturing attention? What do you do? So basically, what we do is we have uh, a couple of our services. So, excuse software. me. If you want to know Nigerians, you know from their accent. Right? Sorry. Uh, so Iranda was say basically, right? Like, and that's why I love Nigerians. Nigerians, we love to like, we love to articulate our thoughts. Like, we break it down before you start, you understand. Continue, please. So, like I said, we have a project management software where okay. we utilize for boarding project globally. Okay. And um, right from that software, we have this our platform like on Instagram, on Facebook. So we might we might just create the challenge or an accelerator program. So we use our, our maybe Facebook ads to just capture attention of people to draw their attention to the project management platform. Okay. That project. So basically, it's more like uh, utilizing Facebook ads. Okay. And uh, in, in alignment with our channel. Okay. To actually catch up. Okay, awesome. Sorry, sir, I didn't hear your name. Bright. Bright. Nice yeah. to meet you, Mr. Bright. Yeah. I didn't hear your name, so I know almost everyone's name here. Hello, madam. Grace. Grace and Daniel. Daniel. Okay, nice to meet you, Daniel. Um, Judith, what do you do? Um, I'm currently working with a uh, NGO, supply chain NGO. Okay, we have lots of NGOs yeah. here. Okay. Nice. What do you guys do in your NGO? Okay, we, we help. Um, build partnership between governments and farm companies. Okay. Government to get the health product from farm companies as a very good way. Okay. So, and the reason why I'm actually asking is because um, for all of these things that I'm talking about, we can find a way to like, integrate them in the things that we're doing. Right? So, you don't necessarily need to like work in marketing or you need to like work in business development. Right? You can always find a way to like integrate these things. If you want to get approval from like um, your boss or something, the question is how how best can I capture the attention that will listen to me, right? How can I structure my sales speech and give to them that is going to convert, and how can I retain it with proof? And that's one thing with principles and strategies you can use them in anywhere at all. So marketing or building a great product starts from having a, um, or marketing starts from having a great product that is worth talking about. Um, I'm sure that most Nigerians here will relate to this image. Please, who knows what this is called? Um, Thank you. I have not tied I better pass my way more. Who knows this is called Vista, right? And uh, who can tell me the significant difference between these two? They, they, fun they function, I have the same solution. It's function the same way, but there's a difference. Who can tell me the difference here? The kind of what I think. Mm -hmm. Energy, like thousands of energy. Okay, energy. Any other person? Capacity. 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 Awesome. Do you want to try it, Grace? Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think this was marketed more. This was marketed more? Yeah, because it was for a um, low level. I better pass my name. Yes. <laughs> well, that was like uh, premium. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other person was like. Okay, great. So now, that, so this is the thing. This is what it is about having a great product. Okay, right. And I'm going to use this as an analogy. Okay, having a great product, right, is like having this generator, this lister. You just need to push a button for it to come on, for it to start making money. 
Until your product is not great, you drag, drag, drag. It's not going to come on. It's not going to move. The needle is not going to move. So now the question is, is your product or your business, is it a lister or a better pass my neighbor? Can someone say amen? Amen. <laughs> is it a lister or a better pass my neighbor? A great product will be easy to push and you just start getting traction. But a product that is not great and that isn't worth talking about, ah, you call your mechanic. Please come and change oil. Oh, please come and change the rope. Just lots of things. And I think the reason why I like talking about this having a great product is because marketing doesn't, and that's one thing people misinterpret. Marketing doesn't start from marketing, okay? Marketing starts from the product. You have a question? Yes, my question is if, if that's it about the resource. Yes, okay. Like, let's say you are giving a budget now, okay? Uh, to 100 percent in terms of percentage for if you're building a great product and ensuring you have a compelling marketing plan. So, what would be the percentage skill of um, um, distributing the budget for that product? Are you going to devote 80 percent to product, 20 percent to marketing? Or 80% of marketing or 20%. Of okay. So and how does that impact the sellability of even if you watch the food, like the product that is not watched by mm -hmm. as a great marketing and uh, comparing marketing, will you be more sellable? Okay. Or not? So this question that you have now, so archive it, right? Let's answer this question at the end of the session. Okay. okay, and maybe while I'm speaking here, you get the answer to the question. Okay, okay does that work? Yeah. So if you have any question, please just Write it down somewhere so I don't forget, so at the end of the session I can take all your questions. Are we good? Yes. Yeah, awesome. Wait, are you having a great time, please? Yes. Yeah. You guys are cold. You see the weather? Yes, yeah. yeah. You know, you know, you know, you know, the weather in Nigeria is so hot that when you ask my young lady, and they will ask me, say, yes, we yeah. <laughs> But yeah, you get your ask, you're like, you know, it's so cold. Yes, but well, I mean, I'm sure you guys are going to get used to it. It gets, it gets more cold, um, like November, December period. Um, this isn't too cold. So, um, one other thing you need to figure out is it's not just about having a great product, you also need to ask yourself, like, who are your customers? Right? Your customers are those that find your products useful, use your products, and can also afford the products. Who are your customers? And that's one question most people haven't answered. They just start from, you know, the products without trying to figure out who their customers are. And that's something Dr. Ola Brown said. Who knows Dr. Ola Brown here? Awesome. So, she said something, I read one of her articles, um, and she said that, you know, right now, Dangote is building a refinery, right? Um, and I heard that they've launched, but... <laughs> <laughs> she said that Dangote is building a refinery, and um, the refinery, it's just for petroleum. It's not 3D petroleum. It's not AI petroleum. It's not well, free petroleum. It's petroleum that John D. Rockefeller way back. Way back. And right now, you see most startups, you're like, oh, we are building the Web3 for the future. We are building AI for this. We are building crypto for that. Please, if you do crypto or AI, please, no disrespect. Mm -hmm. Okay? Don't come for me. <laughs> we are building Web3 for this. We are building crypto for that. We are doing this for that. But the question most of them don't realize is, okay, what problem are you solving? Who are your customers? No matter how good your innovation is, if it's not useful to people, it's the most innovative business product. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the question is, who are your customers? If you're building AI, agriculture, um, import, exports, import, export, like Amanda Boma here, Right? The question is, who are your customers? You need to answer that question. And the framework is, your customers are those that can what? Find your product what? That can also use your what? And that can afford to pay for the... If they can't pay for your product, are they your customers? Yes or no? No. Good. They are what? Prospects. They are not yet customers. Until someone gives you their money, they are not your customers. Okay, and now this is the frame of people find your products useful if um, they use it, not just useful, because some people can find your product useful and they don't use it. Okay, there are some products that I find useful, it's great, but I don't have a need for it, so I'm not going to use it. You understand? Like, let's say products for like um, 
um, pregnant women. It's useful. It's a useful product, but it's not like I won't use it because I don't need it, right? And if I don't use it, I won't pay for it. So people need to find a product useful, use it, and what pay for it. So whenever you're going into business, ask yourself these three questions. Or if you're into business, is my product useful? Sorry, it'll be useful, pay for it, and use it. Sorry. It depends. It depends on your business, yeah. right? So some people um, use it. Um, some people it's useful. They use it, then they pay for it. Some people it's useful. They pay for it, then they use it. Depends on the nature of your business. So just fit this into your own business nature. So for instance, I work in tech, and I receive both like fintech and e-commerce, right? And people have to use our products first. Then we charge them transaction fee. You get the gist now? Awesome. I love how you speak by the way. The big strong coach. And also, one thing people don't figure out when they're like driving products or like bringing their products is distribution. Mm. People, distribution, that is where the money is. The money is not in having social media followers. It's in distribution. Distribution is the holy grail of building a great business. Why do you think Dambote is one of like, the richest men in Africa? Or let's say Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg? Because they figured out distribution. We all use. Please, who is on trends here? This trend has not been trained. I have. <laughs> I have right. When trends came out, I thought, I think Christian, Christian, you have to be on trends. Christian was like, ah, come, you know what I'm saying? Just let me breathe. Don't forget to try. Right? Um, and the funny thing is that Mark, uh, Zop, Mark Zuckerberg, he doesn't know you, he doesn't know me, he doesn't know us, but we're using his products because he has been able to like figure out what distribution. When in the early days of Facebook, when Facebook started, um, something that Mark did, um, they started distributing products from like campus from one campus to another campus to another campus to another campus. So the question, I, so the question I have for you today is. How you, as a business owner, how are you distributing what you do? Okay, business growth and revenue is, is not in how good your product is, but how well you can distribute that product. You can have a great see, you don't want to be the best thing that no one knows about. You don't want to be the best thing that no one knows about. You know, um, um, in the Bible, there's a rich wise king in the book of Solomon. Who knows John will be here? Uh, <laughs> we all do, we are all together of John. <laughs> Disciples. <laughs> you know, there's a rich, I, I mean, the reason, why I, no, the reason why I mentioned John is John loves using this metaphor, so actually, he passes points at first. Um, th- th- there is a rich wise king in the book of Solomon, right? Um, is it book of Proverbs, sorry? Right, and you know, there was a problem in the city, and people went to like meet this, you know, rich white, not rich, sorry, wise king. People went, sorry, wise, wise old man, sorry, people went to meet this wise old man. Right, so people went to meet him, and you know, he gave them the solution to that problem. He's wise, he's wise, he's old, or he's not known and rich. What is needed though? What is the tool? And if you want to be the kingdom, you need that too. So this, so this man is wise, but no one knows him. If he was known, he would have been as popular as Solomon. So are you that wise person that no one knows about? Are you that best soft bread that's hidden? Are you that gemstone, that diamond that people can't see? Come with the light on that Exactly, we are the light of the world, we are the salt of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is how well are you distributing what you're doing? Even for your personal brand as well. Now let's step outside of products. You see how I'm intentional about these things? She has a, she has a phone camera viewing me here. My G has another camera video me here. It's because I want to distribute my content. Mm-hmm. I want to cut my content into different clips for TikTok, for Instagram, for Twitter, for Threads, and distribute it. 
As I'm going to live in a new one, you know, as I'm going to fire, so I don't know fire, so I don't know fire. You have to be intentional about things. And that was what really helped me when I was like starting my career. Right? When I go for like a speaking engagement or maybe when I go for like something, I started my career, you know, going from who knows PCT me here? Okay, so peace, but so myself and peace way back then in Benin City, right? We used to, oh my god, we were hustlers, and then I went to Benson Downside University, one of the best schools in yeah. Nigeria. Everyone went there. John went to Benson University. Yeah, great people go to Benson Downside University. Right? So, I went to Pierre, and you, you have to wear corporate wear, you know, with tie, the tie it's like you want to choke. Right? You have your, you know, broke shoes, and you must wear socks. If you don't wear socks, you'll go back to the hostel. That's true. So then, myself and Peace, one time this one, Peace, you know, Peace was done with school, she was actually working with an agent in BIA, right? We used to go from school to school to like deliver letters to their students, once like speak to their students, we would dress up on that whole song, going to like, you know, um, drop letters here, you know, please, can we stand? There was this time we finished speaking at one school, the principal loved her so much, and he was like, come and speak at the church, we will pay you. And I'm like, yes, so happy, they will pay us. Went to the church to speak. I was very young, I was like 19, 20. Went to the church to speak, I spoke about, you know, preppers, um, he spoke about, you know, prosperity, um, um, someone else spoke about, you know, different things, money and all. And after the speaking engagements, you know, on our way back, they were like, oh, we love this so much, please, take this brown, what, envelope. <laughs> we took the brown envelope, we said, let's go to Matthias. Oh my god, if you if you if you live in Benin, Benin City, you know Matthias. Yes. Or GT Foods. <laughs> right, let's go to Matthias, we're going to Matthias. We open the brand level. Guess how much we sold? We have four. We sold one thousand naira. Uh, for four people. For four people. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> we sold one thousand naira, you know? And we were sad. I mean not really sad, but we we're happy that we impacted it. But we saw we said you pay us. But you gave us transport instead. You understand? And you know, and, and what I'm trying to like tell the stream is after everything, we went on social media, we spoke about the stream. We took pictures, we spoke about it. And more people started inviting us for stuff like that. So the question is how well are you distributing and promoting yourself as a personal brand? Two years ago, when I came here, um, I was going at 10 and I told Raymond, see Raymond. With the kind of things that I have, I can't just come in and I'm coming to speak. So that I can add international speakers to my family. <laughs> you understand? So how well are you promoting yourself as a how well are you distributing yourself? Distribution is the holy grail of business growth. So and how can you figure out distribution? Right? So who knows it? You see, you know. Hey, 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 you know, Bonaboy is an amazing artist, wow. right? And I just said that you know, amazing people come from Portugal City. Wow. You know, you know Bonaboy, the likes of Bonaboy, the likes of Pamalay, the likes of Duncan Mazi, the likes of Mutin Tutu, the likes of Sabinus. I just have like chicken my name there, you know. The likes of Grace. The likes of Grace, you know. And what thing he has mastered is distribution. That's how he won the Grammys. If you ask any random right now, you just say, last class, they will shut it down, cast it. And you ask them, what's the meaning of breakfast? It's, we know, it's not what to eat in the morning. <laughs> but we, we Nigerians, we know ourselves, we know it. See, distribution. So, where are your customers located? Where are customers located? So, the assignment for you right now is write down a list of all the places your prospective customers are located. Hmm. Ah, you're getting the remote, you know? It's coming. <laughs> Just things down. Just things down. <laughs> Doing this together. And that's how musicians, they've hacked it. Oh my god. See, we try to be told musicians are some of the best marketers. They've hacked it. Who knows Rema? Billy Boy. I know where I know his mother's house. I'm kidding, but I get the Right? Rema is now a global sensation. Wow. But Rema was only known mostly in West in Africa. After he did the partnership with Selena Gomez. Mm -hmm. 
<sighs> he became a, he went to India. <laughs> India, <laughs> India, <laughs> India. <laughs> if it was maybe you know somewhere in Europe, I would say, but India. <laughs> India. <laughs> You understand? He went to India and he did something amazing there. <laughs> Partnerships. If you understood Bonner Boy's career, <coughs> Bonner Boy has, you know, dominated Afrobeat right now. He has dominated Afrobeat. I love music a lot. And I love analyzing this. He has dominated Afrobeat across Africa. And now Bonner Boy is, you know, doing partnerships with like people like Tintuan Savage. He's about releasing a track with like um, Buster Rhymes. Right? He has realized that, oh, he has done all he can, he has gotten it all in Afrobeat. He wants to now go into the hip hop industry and conquer that as well. But you won't see Bonner Boy being my, I want to rap. Yeah, yo, yeah, yo. No, he's partnership. Most of the best lessons that will teach us business growth in life, they are around us. But we are so busy with other things that we miss these lessons. So now my question to you is, how best are you having partnerships with people? Okay, so set so as a brand, we, you know, we figure that for us to actually grow exponentially, we need to partner with creators. Okay, so we started doing things with the likes of Future Beast, the Harris, Fela Grote, partnerships. And it doesn't have to be anything, it can be something as simple as an Instagram Live, a content collaboration, a Twitter space. We're about, you know, and, um, you know, we have this project called, you know, the New Audience Project, right? So what we did was that we dissected our audience into, like, different categories. Remember this, how many? Just let me know how many minutes I have left. Okay. So we dissected our audience into different categories. And we're like, okay, once I like, reach out to, like, more people in these categories, how best can we do it? Partnerships. So we're about doing a partnership with Money Africa. We have a partnership coming up with one of like the leading banks in Nigeria right? about to be announced sometime in September. Partnerships. So the question is how best are you, you know, having partnerships with people? One of the best ways to get to where your customers are located is through partnerships. If you see someone dominating that industry, don't just try to compete with them. Try to partner with them. Competitions are great. But partnerships are what? Greater. So, and also, one thing you also need to figure out is don't just sell a product, build a community. One thing most people will fail to realize is your customers are not numbers. Your customers are humans with flesh and blood running through their veins. Your customers are people that have feelings and emotions and they are, and they are going through things. Humanize your customers. Don't say you want to reach out to 10,000 people or 10,000 users. Humanize them. And when you start humanizing your customers, you start building a community. A community is, and, you know, one way to like build a community is actually, um, you know, bringing people together to discuss about something common and you all are going to like a particular location together. As a company in seller, our goal is to help creators or is to empower the creator economy in Africa. And to help creators learn how to like, you know, make more money and grow their sales. How do we do that? Webinars, Instagram lives, content on our blog, putting out educational content. The brands that will be respected in the future to come are brands that go through the education route. How best are you educating your target audience or your people about what you're doing? So don't just sell tie or shoes. Create content around how you can style your shoe with native the way Milton is. Create content on the type of clothes that you should wear based on your skin tone. Or your lady, you sell makeup kits. Oh, how can I, you know, you know, you know, do my own makeup that will look as beautiful as Grace? So the whole, so the idea is you should learn how to, you know, educate your people. What problems are they having? Answer their questions with content. Solve their problems with content and not just a product. Don't just sell a product and let them go. 
And what in most businesses fail to realize is it's not just about getting customers. We focus on that. We focus on getting customers. How best can we retain these customers that we're getting? Customer retention is as important as customer acquisition. Hmm. I like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> There's a story that says it takes 10 more times to get a new customer than to retain a new customer. Thank you. Customer retention is as important as customer acquisition. And how best can you retain your people? We put them in the community. When you sell products, maybe you're a distributor them. Don't just say, okay, send a pay. No, no, no. Ask for their email address. Ask for their phone number. Ask for their name. There is, if you're in the internet marketing space, there is a, a very old saying that says, do not build your house on a rented land. Yeah. You see that, you see that Elon Musk? Yeah. Uncle Twitter has changed the name on Twitter to X. Then I was on that guy. <laughs> right? Tomorrow, Twitter can change the algorithm, everything, and your whole business that you built on Twitter be demolished. So while you're building your like you're building your house on someone's rented land, rent your own land, have your own digital real it's called digital real estate. Try to rent apartments or lands in like different platforms. So you have to be so you have to be everywhere. Then build your own platform. How do you do that? You build your own blog. Your own website. If you are a personal brand in 2023 and you don't have a website, your personal brand is not branding. We, 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 we all need, a, everyone needs a website. It doesn't have to be anything. Even a one picture website with your buyer and everything. It's enough. So my, so my challenge to you right now is go build your own website. You know? Your customers, when they reach out to you, get their name, email address, everything. Use free tools like MailChimp, you know, send posts. You send them emails. Put them on a, even if it's WhatsApp broadcast list, put them there. Send them WhatsApp broadcast messages. Right? Put them in a community. You know? You know, host community events on Twitter Space, Instagram Live, um, Summit, be an educational brand. Don't, don't sleep on content marketing. Don't sleep on content marketing. Recognize and celebrate your customers at Sela. We do this thing called Mechan Spotlight, where, where every end of every week, we spotlight a Mechan that is doing an amazing job. And they don't know that we're doing that. Last year, we did a very huge campaign called the Seller 100 campaign. And I mean, not to brag, um, Seller's team is like one of the few marketing teams that people will call for a seller marketing team to come, like everybody in seller marketing team come. Let's have Twitter space conversation and pick people's brain. Because this, because this Seller 100 campaign that we did, it went viral. We spotlighted the top 100 creators in Africa. It went, so if you go on Google right now, type for top 100 creators in Africa, we are there. Don't sleep on SEO, search engine optimization. So recognize your people. And you know, when it got interesting was when the likes of Felagrity, Larry and Michelle, and all those guys were like, we post them like, oh my god, like this is amazing. Like we're so excited because we recognize them. When you recognize your customer, your customers recognize you. So recognize and celebrate your customers, recognize and celebrate your people. And because of this campaign, uh, you know, like our products grew massively for four months. Campaign that we did in December, January, February, March, April, we were like, we were just seeing the growth going up. One campaign can change your life. Just one. Recognize your customers. Okay, so I was talking about partnerships and collaborations, and also measure the right metrics. And that's something people don't do. They just post on Instagram, right? Sometimes like round up quickly. So measure the right metrics. Where am I getting the most traction from? Where am I getting the most inquiry from? Where are my customers, you know? Where am I getting the most questions from? When we started Blog, Blog was an edtech platform. It was like the netflix of online courses for marketers. So people used to like pay us like a subscription fee of like, let's say $10 per month to like assist our courses. It sounds good on here. But when we went to the market, or more, the market showed us pepper. We have to like go back and say, okay, what questions are people asking us? What are the inquiries? I realized that we're getting more inquiries and money from startup founders looking for marketing talent. We're making more money from there. And I realized, do you know what? <laughs> Thank you to Netflix Online because we have to be what? We provided to this, build our talent pool, still selling marketing courses to people in our talent pool. 
Connecting the people in our talent school to startup founders and making money on startup founders as well. So if we didn't listen and say, oh, we are passionate about selling just marketing courses, let's just online courses. You see that thing about passion? <laughs> <laughs> you will still be struggling by now. I won't have money to pay salary. They'll come out on Twitter. <laughs> you understand? So you need to listen to where you're getting the most inquiries from. That's very important, right? Also, measure the right metrics. Use different tools like Bitly, UTM links, Google Analytics. Use those things to like use those things to like measure the right metrics. Document every single thing. Document every single thing. Okay. And lastly, do the things that most you know. And most people, when I say people think moving the needle is just a fun marketing thing, it's actually very deep. Okay, we want to like make more money in our business. What things can we do that will move the needle? Once I get more users, how can we move the needle? What things that we need to do to like move the needle to achieve that? Or let's say, for instance, we want to, you know, get more Instagram followers, increase our email list. How can we move the needle for that? So the needle is the me that simply that metric that is important to you. How can you move that needle? So whenever you wake up, ask yourself, how can I move the needle today? And this can also be applied to your own personal life. Have an OKR, KPIs for your own personal life. How can I move the needle for my personal brand? How can I move the needle for my finances? How can I move the needle for my relationship? Okay, I'm having relationship issues. What are the things I need to do to, you know, make my partner more happy and also I'll be happy as well? How can I move the needle for that? So I want to, you know, leave you with this. Um, couple of things. One, the products that go viral and the products that make the most money, they are not the best products, mm. but the products that are known. Mm. The people that get invited for speaking engagements, for events, are not the best speakers. They are the speakers that are known. The best selling authors are not the best authors, but they are the what? Best selling mm. authors. The best selling authors are not the best authors. They are the best selling authors. They are the ones people know. The products that become unicorns are not necessarily the best products, but the products that people know. And also, please do the things that we do. I'm going to thank you so much for your time. Right? What's your own personal message, your brand message? And start creating content around that. Focus on the message, know yourself. The thing is, we try to we try to tie our personal brand. We take the personal branding in personal brand very personal. Yeah. yeah. Separate it. Mills Institute is a brand. I am a different person. He knows, she knows. Totally different person. There are things that are going on in my life that I don't share on social media. But Mills Institute is a marketing brand. Marketing professional, you put the house. Once in a while, I try to like share personal things so that I just get, try to like relate with people. But don't take it so personal. Focus on the message and not yourself. I hope that answered. Okay, thank you. Yes, um, you mentioned that um, you, you got an aha moment for the seller. You think you can sell her for your head? Mm -hmm. okay, okay, yeah. Yeah. I I I tell my friend that marketing. The product should marketing should be so interesting. Like the product should, should like it so much that you talk about the product even unconsciously. Mm -hmm. So how were you just talking about the product to be part of setup? Um good question. So basically I had my own startup that was almost like setup called Square Academy. Um and but you know the product wasn't really great, but seller is a great product. And myself and the founder of seller, we are very good friends actually before I actually started working at seller. Um, I was consulting for the company, right? So he was, we, had, we was, he was in Dubai. We always, he was always asking questions. When he came down to Nigeria, you know, we became friends. We were living in the same estates at Lekki One, Prime Waters then. Um, then um, what happened? I, I think when I was leaving my other job, I was like, I, I really was like going to like the startup space and take it serious. And I was like, oh, why don't I like, you know, just come work, you know, with Sarah? I'm like, oh yeah, that's cool. So about it, um, I was offered equity in the company. I loved it, and I just joined the company. So people can ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to ask on that question. Um, let's, you are the factor that you have a relationship with the person. Um, do you have any, from your experience, if it was a person that did not have any personal relationship 
I would have invested in Bible from those years. Here is the secret. Okay. Create a case study for the company. Go through all they are doing online, right? Create a case study and strategy on how they can get their next 10,000 users. Go to LinkedIn, pay for LinkedIn Premium, send the founder, the marketing manager again with this case study and say, we love to work with this company and execute this. If your case study is good enough, we'll give you this thing here. Most people that have worked on my team right now, that is the strategy that they're really like, oh, we'll say, um, this is like a strategy that I think you guys can use to grow your SEO in your company. Like, oh, let's listen to you. Oh, you're great at SEO, let's hire you. So yes. So always give value, go with value. Lead with value. Thank you so much. Uh,